Your parents are there intended as an example for you to follow. Some of you are saying, you didn't know my dad, David. My dad was a bad man. He was an example not to follow. I was fortunate. I had parents who were good examples to me. They were both fine examples of Christian living. And as I was growing up, I could watch them and see things that were right. I could recognise the foibles as well, but they were an example. And uh, very often your mother has an extra role because you spend a lot more time as you're growing up with your mother. And she'll say, David, don't do that. My mum had to say that to me quite a bit. But uh, that's like if I'm sticking something on that image of God, of God in me and I'm covering it up, uh, your mum will say, don't do that. Don't do that, that's not right. And it prevents some of the guns getting on you in the first place. That's a wonderful thing. I thank God that I had a Christian upbringing. I had good parents who were consistent and would say to me, don't do that. When my parents were restraining me, I didn't necessarily like it. But they were doing it for my good and they were restraining me from covering over the image of God in me. But you know, parents aren't enough for us. We need more than parents because, uh, let's be honest, parents love us, whatever. And uh, some of the biggest rogues in history, their mothers loved even them. And so they have an unconditional love, which is an evidence of God. But uh, it does mean that they overlook some of our mistakes, some of our sins, some of our wrongdoing. So, he also often gives us other members of our immediate family, brothers and sisters. And you've always wondered why you don't get on with your brother or sister. Well, perhaps it's because God puts them there. As family, you can't get away from them, but that means they can tell you the truth. In a way that friends don't have to. Friends can say, oh, they've been stupid, I'm not having anything more to do with them. And they can go and find new friends. But your brothers and sisters have to put up with you. You're always family. And so they will say things to you that you don't like. They will rub up against you in a way that you don't like and you can't get away from them. And so God will use them like sandpaper to rub down those rough edges. He'll say, I'm wanting to make you like Jesus. And some bits aren't coming off, so I'm going to have to rub hard. And your brother or your sister, one of his best tools for that. And then God gives us the church. And the church is a wonderful organisation. It's full of different people. And some of them are really lovely. Like all of you. And some you wouldn't choose. You wouldn't necessarily pick them as your friends. But God puts them there for the purpose. The wonderful thing about the church is that you get people in all generations following Jesus and coming together it's the only organisation I know of where people come together from the tiniest baby to the oldest person. And they come together and you see examples to follow and you see people who God uses to chip off a bit of you. And God puts you together with people you wouldn't necessarily want to be together with. But he says, I want you to love them because I love them. I want you to love them not because you find them attractive or interesting or nice people, but I love them. And so I want you to. And they love me. And so I want you to treat them as you would treat me. 
And the church provides a safe and encouraging environment where we are supported and we are loved and we are also challenged to give of ourselves in service. But as I said, you and I sometimes have some really tough parts of us that God wants to change and he wants to use people and so what he'll do he'll uh, he'll bring something to your life maybe at work maybe a neighbor maybe somebody in church somebody who you really struggle with them most of us have got somebody that we we know who we really really struggle with and one of the things you find in life is that if you move away, so you, you, oh, I can't be doing with that person at work, I'll get another job. So you get another job. Then at that new job, there's somebody there who really has the same effect on you. And when you look at them, they're a similar sort of personality. A similar sort of person to the first person. Or maybe you don't find them at work, but you suddenly find that a neighbour moves in. And they're one of those characters. And you grit your teeth, and you can't be doing with them, and you really... And you really have to be careful. And the reason God puts those people there, is to say to you, look, here's somebody I made. And there's something in your personality that I need to change. Maybe you've prayed, Lord, give me love. Let me be a loving person. Well, the way he's going to do it is going to send you somebody who's very difficult for you to love. And the most, I'll tell you the most, of here's, here's the thing you really hate about this person. Nobody else can see it. You can see what a horrible person they are. But nobody else notices. Everybody else thinks they're lovely. Everybody else gets on well with them. Everybody at work, everybody in the neighborhood thinks, oh, <laughs> Harry, Nick, John, or whatever he's called, I just realized I don't want to accuse anybody here. <laughs> Harry, Nick, or John, that, that is a lovely guy. What a smashing look. And you think, don't they realize? It's just so annoying. Everything it does makes me tick. Go on, edge. And what God wants you to do is treat that person as Jesus would treat them. You have to be Jesus to them. That's his challenge to you. Because that's what he wants you to become, Jesus to them. And you think, you know, all right. But here's the worst part about it. When you meet that person, the Bible tells us that the way you treat them is the way you've treated Jesus. He wants you to see Jesus in them. That's a very hard thing to do. But that's the way God works. He uses people who come into your life as an example he uses them as an example to follow and an example not to follow. He uses them to restrain, rub, rub you up the wrong way so that he can rub down those rough edges. And he uses them to restrain you from doing things that would cover his image in you. Okay? Next week we'll look at his second tool from his toolbox.